Coming up on the FRC Open Alliance Show. 4481 Team Rembrandt is back. This awesome team from the Netherlands has so many great updates to showcase, including improvements to what they're doing for their climbing mechanism, which you definitely got to check out. We're going to get some live demos as well, too, of them uh, scoring on the reef. So definitely some great things to dive into there. And then we're going to be diving more into their autonomous modes some of their pathing, what they're looking at doing, uh, maybe some future aspirations as well. So let's check back in with 4481 Team Rembrandt's here on the FRC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Go ahead free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the Join button below to get started. Let's welcome back on the FRC Open Alliance show, 4481 Team Rembrandt's from the Netherlands. It is always awesome to see uh, this team on, get all the updates. I just watched the uh, week four recap video that y'all did, and the, the amount of updates from the first time we had you on to where you are now is absolutely incredible. I know we got a lot of great demos to showcase today and talk about, so we got three new students on. Why don't you introduce yourselves, let us know what you're doing on your team, and we're going to get right into that Coral Algae Manipulator. That's really cool. Yeah. So uh, I'm Niels, and I'm from the software department. I'm Thomas, and I'm also in the software department. And my name is Suze, and I'm from the hardware department. So uh, I'm going to first talk about uh, the core algae. Uh, it is a subsystem that makes sure that we can uh, remove algae from the reef and uh, score coral at the same time. So what we do is we uh, get the algae out of the reef, and uh, at the same time, we can turn it and we can score the coral. So we don't have to uh, drive back to get something or to leave something. We can just get it from the reef, turn it and uh, score the coral. This makes sure that we can uh, all do it in one move. It saves us a lot of time and it uh, is also really yeah, productive to just do it in one move. Uh, it, al it also makes sure that um, when we, uh, we can hold two game key pieces at the same time. So that's also uh, something that's really productive. I have a question about that, uh, the intake on there. So yeah. when, we see, when we see that intake, that belt hit the algae, only the bottom part hits first and then it goes yeah. into the top part. Can you talk a little bit more about that? So we have one um, uh, turning and then it just makes sure that it lifts uh, the uh, algae up and then it goes into the intake, so it grips uh, the other one turns the other way around. So it just grips uh, the algae from two sides, and then it makes sure it's secure on both sides so it doesn't fall out. So I guess my, my question specifically is, um, when you're looking at creating that grabber, why not have like both touch at the same time? Like, Why did you end up going the route of just the bottom touching first? Like, What, what did you see that made that make sense for your team? The reason why the bottom uh, roller touches it first is because it simply doesn't reach far enough and uh, we do this because uh, we are, are afraid that uh, maybe the, the, the gripper will uh, get stuck on one of the reefs and uh, this way we uh, make sure that we can take the LG uh, and it doesn't get stuck. So uh, we, uh, we started this week with uh, the tuning of the pivot and, to the, and the elevator and uh, we did this by running a small autonomous mode. Uh, that moves the pivot and the elevator up and down slowly and uh, eventually much faster. And we do it this way so we can get accurate uh, PID tuning for it um, and to make sure it is as fast as possible while also st still being very accurate. Uh, yeah, so um, we, we tuned the pivot this way um, and uh, we uh, did it uh, to make it as fast as possible. And uh, we, uh, the, we need to account for the weight of the pivot also with the elevator. And uh, now we uh, do it, uh, we make sure that the pivot is uh, always uh, in the stowed position when the elevator goes up uh, to make sure that we don't hit the reef. Um, 
and we do this with the with the sequence so we make sure the pivot is in the right place then we move the elevator up and then we move the uh, pivot to the uh, scoring location yeah so we also uh, had to account for um, the gripper and the lift and the elevator uh, because the, we don't want them to collide with each other so we did that in bondage scope and we made a sort of um, simulator and in that we tested if they would collide with each other. So in all this testing that your team has been doing for things, uh, you mentioned a couple of things you had to try to help fix. Uh, were there any other major difficulties that your team had while, while doing your tuning or maybe anything that like, hey, we found this out so we did something differently based on that? There were a lot of like different, differentialities in our tuning. A lot went wrong in the tuning, but eventually we came to a good constant. So what were some of the things that maybe went wrong for you? Um, the, the motor was kind of gripping on the edges and um, yeah, the, the motor was slipping and that just made it a lot less um, accurate. Another thing that we encountered was that uh, we couldn't move our pivot, uh, pivot as uh, far as we wanted to intake uh, the coral. And um, we eventually fixed this by just moving the limit switch, which uh, stopped the pivot when it came too far. Um, and we uh, are also planning on extending our lift a bit further because now it's, it doesn't reach uh, the height width that we actually want. So one of the things that I've been really excited uh, to see is your climber because your team has been able to climb really quick, kind of on the move as well too. Can we dive more into uh, how your climber has been all coming along and show more of that? Yeah. yeah. So um, with the climber, uh, we tested a lot of different climbing uh, systems and uh, eventually we found out that the uh, uh, climbing system from uh, the EveryBot is working best for us so uh, what we do which you also see on the video we drive into the cage uh, it clicks itself on the metal pulls it into the hole beneath then it tilts a little and it pulls itself up so that it uh, stays stable into the uh, into the air and that it's uh, it's not tilting anymore so it just climbs like it tilts the cage and it climbs itself up and then makes sure it's stable uh, with the center of gravity into the cage so uh, it's great to hear that you're using the EveryBot Climber. A lot of teams we've talked to are utilizing that. Did you make any uh, modifications to the EveryBot Climber other than just the uh, packaging aspect of it? Um, we haven't because we just first wanted to test this, how great this was working. But now we, have so, we, we see some things that we think we need to improve. And uh, we are already planning to improve some uh, things about it to make the climbing easier uh, for the driver. So what are maybe a couple of things you want to improve on it? Uh, first of all, we wanted to uh, uh, make something to uh, guide the cage into the climber. Um, and this will also act as a, a safety to our robot so no coral gets stuck in it. And another thing is that we want to shorten the, the gripper arms because in this way we can climb more effectively. Um, and the... the Thing that choose out and into the hole of the cage we want to, to modify this because now it gets stuck in the bumper and we want to make it more efficient yeah it makes sense and i mean already impressive for what we've seen so far so i can't wait to see how it gets fully modified to fit on your robot and how quickly your team is going to be able to climb is really cool uh, i know we have a, a live demo of your coral cycles can we uh showcase that I'll, we'll put that up on camera and so can you walk us through a little bit what some of these cycles look like for your team so we, we added the LEDs to showcase what level we uh, want to score on and um, we, we made sure to uh, lift the, uh, made the lift go up a bit uh, before picking up the, the coral from the coral station because in this way the R gripper would be parallel with the, with the ramp of the coral station. And we are able to score all uh, all four uh, levels, and uh, uh, for the L2 and L3 
Three third scoring, the lift doesn't need to go up, but for the L4 scoring it does. Uh, we are still working out a bit on the wheels for our gripper because as you just saw, sometimes the goal might slip. And uh, <laughs> just like that, the wheel might slip sometimes, and that's what we are trying to figure out how to improve that. Yeah. Are, are you looking at uh, maybe doing a different type of uh, grip on it, or like what are some of your thoughts in terms of improving it? Yeah, we're trying all kinds of different wheels to see what, which wheels have the best grip. Um, and uh, we might also change uh, some things on the grip to see if it helps with the grip. So why don't we do uh, one or two more cycles, we'll show that off, and then we'll hop back to you all. So one of the other things that I want to ask you on that, when we saw uh, the robot trying to intake coral from the station as well, too, sometimes it didn't always go in that way. Is that something that you're looking at doing something a little bit different with, or is that just you know yeah. practice, that sort of thing? Uh, can you explain that a bit more? So uh, what we're going to change on the competition robot is that we're going to make the funnel a little bit bigger so that uh, the chance that it intakes it uh, from the coral station is higher because we have a, a more space to uh, make sure it goes into the gripper. So uh, that's what we're going to change about that, that it, it has a little bit more um, of why that it takes it in a little bit easier. Uh, because now you see that sometimes it goes next to it or it goes a little bit uh, out of place and then it falls off. So that's what we're going to change about it to uh, make sure that it uh, works a little better with the funnel. Yeah, and one of the things that I'm really excited, I, and we saw some of that demonstrated here, is some of your pathing as well, too, both in autonomous and in what looked like teleop as well, too. Can you talk a little bit more about what maybe some of your autonomous paths look like and what you're using for that? Yes, of course. Um, uh, the, autonomous, uh, the autonomous paths were uh, created or thought of by the, our 3DM department. Uh, what they thought what would be the most efficient and most uh, scoring path uh, we decided to do uh, name it the Crotter Pounder because it would score four corals. Uh, it would uh, score the preloaded coral and then drive to the uh, coral station to collect the other three corals. Um, this would be the most efficient, we think, and um, together with uh, great uh, programming, I think this will become a very good autonomous. Um, we still have some had some time left during these paths, so we might try to make it a five coral uh, autonomous. But for now, we are focused on creating the four nodes, uh, four four coral autonomous. One of the things uh, when we have talked to some other teams on what they're looking at doing for their pathing, some teams are really uh, focused on like trying to get one on on each uh, reef uh, space, and the other one, like you all, are trying to get multiple levels for it. Um, have you considered doing kind of the other side where you're like, hey, we're just going to try to do stuff? Or I'm assuming you're going to have multiple different types of autonomous paths available, right? Uh, for now, we are only focusing on this one. Um, and we are only scoring on the L4 because we didn't want to need to remove any of the algae during uh, the autonomous pass. Um, this is That's the reason why we don't score L3 and L2. Also because it just gives more points to do L4. Um, but the, for now, we are only focusing on this one, and after it works, we might look at some other paths, but for now, this is the plan we have. No, I, did, I didn't quite catch it. That's great. That So you're looking at L4 in particular, and that makes a lot of sense to me, right? Um, so that's cool. I, I look forward to seeing, you know, kind of uh, this in action as you continue to implement and iterate on this as well, too. Uh, so that's going to be really neat. Uh, anything else that you all want to talk about or cover on your current progress? Yeah. No, I, I think we covered most of the stuff. Well, Team Rembrandt, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I know as you know, we get busier and busier, uh, you, know, you all are going to have to pack up and head out for your first event soon. How far in advance are you going to have to ship everything out, or how many days away is that for you? So uh, we actually don't ship it to the United States, but we take uh, the entire robot in our suitcases. 
So it flies with us because we have like uh, we can take it apart in different subsystems. We divide them over the uh, suitcases of our team members, and then we just uh, it, we take it with us on the flight we were on. So uh, so that we can work on it and fix things till the really last moment. That's yeah, we have something called the plug and play philosophy in which we uh, can switch out every subsystem of the robot if in like four screws or something. Yeah, and that makes it really easy to take apart the robot or, or something breaks, you can, you know, replace it really easily. And that's just how we do it. Yeah, I, I actually totally forgot you all do that. That's great that you do this well. By the way, enjoy uh, what might be your last year in California now because they just, uh, as we we're recording this, right, they just announced that California is moving the district. So wh where are you looking at going maybe in future? Are you, are you looking at way up north in the States and enjoying the snow in Minnesota or what do you have in mind? At this moment, we really don't know, but I think that's something uh, we will look at in the future. Right now, we're just focusing on this year, and what comes next year comes next year, and um, we'll see. <laughs> That's fair enough on there. Yeah, good luck, Rembrandt. We can't wait to see how you do, and you're competing weeks one and week two at Pinnacles and Ventura County. So good luck the rest of the way, and we'll see you there. Thank you. Thank you. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.